Example 130.5. A researcher wants to test the claim that the mean happiness score for married couples is greater than 2.5 on a three-point scale, where one is not very happy, two is pretty happy, and three is very happy. The significance level for the test is 0 0.01. So part A says, what is the probability of the type one error? Well, if you look at the claim here for the problem, so let's write that down first, first and foremost. If you look at the claim here, it says that the claim is that the mean is greater than 2.5. The mean is greater than 2.5. Now, that claim happens to have a greater than symbol, which means it also happens to be, right, HA. So isn't this also HA as well as the claim? And the reason why that is important is because it is HA that tells us what kind of test we're conducting. So the claim isn't always HA, but in this case it is because of the greater than symbol. And because of that greater than symbol, it indicates a right-tailed test. So a right-tailed test has a simple property, which is the probability of a type 1 error for a right-tailed test is at most alpha. So the answer to part A in the problem is linked to that. The answer is at most alpha. And of course alpha in this problem is given to us as 0 0.01 or 0 0.01. That is the probability of a type 1 error for this test. All right, let's look at part B then. Part B says if the p-value turned out to be 0 0.0004, what is the initial conclusion? Well, let's think about that. If your p-value turns out to be 0 0.0004, that is less than the alpha value of 0 0.01. And whenever that happens, we are going to reject the null hypothesis. So if we rejected the null hypothesis when the p-value is small, then we have to answer the next question here, which is what possible error type 1 or 2 could have been committed after forming that conclusion? Well, don't forget that a type 1 error is the mistake of rejecting the null when it is true, right? For a type 2 error, it's the mistake of failing to reject the null, so not rejecting the null when it really is false. Well, we rejected the null, so we couldn't have committed a type 2. That's not possible, because a type 2 requires that we do not reject a false null hypothesis. Well, we rejected our hypothesis, the null hypothesis. So the only possible error we made was the error of rejecting a true null. So if it turns out that this null hypothesis, um, the null hypothesis here, of course, would be less than or equal to 2.5. If it turns out that the null hypothesis is true and we rejected it, then it would basically uh, be a type 1 error. So in this case, our only possible error is the type 1 because we rejected the null. So please remember that a prerequisite of committing the type 1 error is that you first reject the null. And then it becomes a type 1 error if that null was actually true, right? Um, and same with the type 2, sort of, right? It's a similar idea. The only way you could commit the type 2 is if you don't reject, right? But then it turns out that the null is false and you should have. So the type 2 error, though, requires that you don't reject first as part of that. And same with the type 1 error, it requires that you do reject. So in this particular example, because we rejected, we might have committed a type 1. So we'll say maybe type 1. Remember, that's a maybe, right? In fact, we know the probability of it. It was 0 0.01. There's only a 1% chance that we committed that error. All right, part C. If the p-value for the test turned out to be instead 0 0.0301, what is the initial conclusion? Well, let's think about that scenario now. If your p-value is instead something that's larger, like 0 0.0301, and that is greater than 0 0.01, which is alpha, then we do not reject, right? We do not reject. HO. And remember, if you don't reject HO, then it is possible that we might have committed the type 2 error, like we just spoke about, right? When you don't reject, you might have just uh, failed to reject something that was false. So maybe, maybe a type 2. But just maybe, right? We don't know for certain that we committed it. And of course, the probability is always going to be higher that we don't make those kinds of mistakes. So in the end, those are the three answers for the problem, right? What's the probability of the type 1 error? Because it's a right-tailed test, it's at most alpha. In this scenario, where the p-value is small, a small p-value causes us to reject the null hypothesis. Whenever you reject, you might commit the type 1. In the last case, the p-value is larger than alpha. Large p-values make us not reject the null hypothesis, and that means maybe it's a type 2, because whenever you don't reject, you might commit the type 2 error.